Well, good morning. It's uh, good to see you all uh, this morning. I don't know about you, but when the, the two things happened when uh, our brother was singing that hymn for me. Firstly, it took me back to Africa and uh, to when I was in Zambia. And uh, what a joy it was to, to have that. So thank you, brother, for leading us. But also for the fact that what that song was about was ab- exactly what I'm about to speak about this morning. And we had no... No message whatsoever. I got goosebumps when he started singing it because it was literally the word is the words in that song were exactly what I'm preaching about this morning. So for those that are new, those that haven't been here before, welcome. Uh, it's good to see you. Good to, good to have you with us. Um, on Sunday mornings, we've been going through the life of Moses. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we went through the Red Sea, and today we're moving into the wilderness um, at the at the waters of Mara. So we're going to read today from Exodus 15, verses 22 to 27. So Andrew had over 20 verses last week, and he took 40 minutes. I've got six six verses today, so it shouldn't be very long this morning. But uh, we'll wait and see about that one. So uh, yeah, Exodus 15, the verses are on the screen. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur, And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Morah, they could not drink the waters of Morah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Morah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statue and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on which, you have, which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elim, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. So they camped. By the waters. And God will bless his word to us this morning. Shall we just pray? <clears throat> Father, just thank you for our time of worship. Thank you for, for that song, Lord, that talks about breaking down walls. And you are the miracle worker, Lord. And as we look into this passage now, Lord, we just pray you'll just use the words that you've given me and that people will hear and be challenged this morning uh, from your word because we ask it in your name. Amen. So a couple of weeks ago, Mark spoke about uh, the crossing of the Red Sea. And in Exodus 14, verse 13, it said these words. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. What we're going to see today is a very, very similar message, but probably a little bit more straightforward and a little bit more hard-hitting. We're going to look at mountains and valleys in our lives that help us to grow in faith. But also we're going to learn that we need to trust in the Lord for everything, for every situation. We're going to see this morning that the children of Israel have come out of Egypt. All the security has gone. I don't know about you, but as you know, I lost my job in um, December last year. And the Lord has provided in miraculous ways. But I've got to rely on him more. And I think it's, it's sometimes it's a great position to be in, you know, brothers and sisters, when we have, to, we have to rely on the Lord. We don't have a choice, we just have to. And, um, and in this situation, that's what's happened to me. You know, security has been taken away. Maybe your security has been taken away. Maybe something that's happened in your life where you've just like, it's all fallen apart. But we will see today that we just need to rely on the Lord. So I don't know whether there's any runners um, with us today. Um, I'm not very good at running. My wife, wife is better than me, even though she's not been doing it that recently, but uh, she's getting back into it. But I don't know if there's any runners here today. I know Karen's a runner. And there's a thing in running that's called hitting the wall. And hitting the wall is not a very, very nice place to be, is it, Karen? <laughs> it's not a nice place to be. And basically what that is, is you're running and you're running and your body can't take any more. You hit the wall. And you, you almost have to, you feel like giving up, 
But that's the worst thing to do. You don't give up. You know, you keep going when you hit the wall. With marathon runners, it happens. You know, and long distance running. I saw. I was looking up this definition, and the definition of hitting the wall is this: a sudden end to advancement or progress to lose effectiveness. And I don't know about you, but there's lots of times in our lives, whether it be business, whether it be personal lives, whether it be spiritual lives, when we just hit a wall. Everything goes. You know, we're fatigued, we're, we may be depressed, we maybe have lost everything. You know, we, we might have had really, really difficult times and we've hit the wall and thought, what's happening here? And this morning, we're going to look in these six verses, very, very simply, very, very practically, what the Lord is speaking to us from these uh, few verses. So in verse 22, and Janice is going to put this up on the screen for me. Thank you, Janice. So in, ja- in verse 22, it says this. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So they just toppled the biggest empire of the world at that time. The Egyptians had been killed in the Red Sea. And they've travelled for three days. But they've travelled for three days without water. And I know even in this country, if you got, haven't got water for three days, then you're going to be exhausted. So they have no water. And it's interesting what the Bible says here and the name of the place. The name of the wilderness is the wilderness of Shur. And I wonder if anyone can guess what sure actually means. We've had it in the songs this morning, and we've all mentioned it this morning. Sure stands for, and it means wall. So the children of Israel had hit a wall. They had no water, and they were really, really exhausted. And, you know, Christian life can be like that, can't it? You know, we know that we're going to have the bitter and the sweet, but we can be assured, brothers and sisters, today, that at the end, we will have glory. We all have mountains and valleys in life and the children of Israel were no different. Three examples of mountains and valleys from the, from, uh, the children of Israel. They had the wall of the Red Sea in front of them, the wall of the bitter waters of Mara and the wall of no food in the wilderness. They then had mountaintop experiences. They crossed the Red Sea miraculously the water is turned sweet miraculously and they get manna, they get bread from heaven, from the Lord. And it's really interesting to see that their life is like this. They've just had the biggest miracle ever. They've walked through the Red Sea, yeah? And yet three days later, they're complaining because they've got no water. Then they've already lost the trust that they should have had. And how much am I like that, you know, in my life? You know, something miraculous happens on Sunday, and by Tuesday or Wednesday, something bad's happened. I'm like, Lord, what's happening here? You know, what, what, why is this not working out for me? You know, and it's a real challenge for us all to have that consistency in our lives. But we all have ups and downs. We all have valleys and we have mountains. So five facts about the wall that they've hit. Firstly, it's intimidating and debilitating. And it will shut you down. Marathon runners usually hit the wall at around about 20 miles, so I'm told. It'd be about half a mile for me hitting the wall. Probably not even that, probably, probably about 300 metres. But um, they usually hit the wall at 20 miles and it, and it makes or breaks them. So if you hit that wall, you need to keep going. But you're, we're going to see today that, that we're not actually going through the wall. The second point is about the wall is it's training for the next level. So we're going to go over the wall, and we're going to see that in a few minutes. Thirdly, the wall is stationary and demands movement on your part. The wall isn't going away. You know, the wall, whatever you've hit in your life, isn't going to go go away. And we'll see in a minute that we're going to climb over that wall to greater things. Fourthly, the wall is where we separate the weak and the strong. The men and the boys, it's the breaking point. It's a really, really difficult time in our lives. And then fifthly, this is the big one. The wall is obstructing your vision of what lies beyond. And this is what we're going to grasp this morning. The higher the wall, the higher the the possibilities, 
that we've got in our Christian lives. The devil puts walls in our paths as we go through the Christian life. But every time we get a wall and we climb over it, it trains us to go further and look for the better things. Beyond the wall for the children of Israel was the promised land. And that's what they didn't realise. They need to get over that wall of the waters of Morah to reach the promised land. Brothers and sisters, it can be make or break time. You may be in your lives, you're struggling today. You've hit the wall. But we have to climb over the wall. It's not a wall, it's a ladder. It's a ladder to the next level. We have to climb over it. So moving on to verse 23. Now when they came to Mara, they could not drink the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Mara. You can imagine them, can't you? They're walking through the desert. There's no water anywhere. And then someone sees a long, long way ahead, water. And they're like, wow, this is amazing. There's water. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And they get to the water, and it's bitter, and they can't drink it. Um, I want to throw this one out for you. And um, this isn't in the Bible, but a few people have written about it, some researchers have, have claimed about these waters. And like I say, just, this is just for your thoughts. And, and, you know, it's not biblical, but it's what some people think. That some re- researchers claim that the miracles were 92% calcium and, magne- and magnesium. I don't know whether you know, but that is the ingredients for a laxative. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? That's the ingredients of a laxative. But the message behind this is, Maybe God wanted to clean Israel of all the parasites of Egypt out of their lives. Israel had picked up bad habits when they were in Egypt. Maybe they'd picked up parasites in their lives. We pick up stuff from the world, don't we? As Christians, you know, we pick up stuff from the world. And maybe this morning God is saying to us that we need to clean ourselves out of the things, the bad things in the world in our lives that are in the world. Even when we are saved by God's grace, we still have these habits and these bad habits, don't we, sometimes in our lives. And again, this is a challenge to me as it is to all of us this morning. We need to get rid of us of these things in our lives and cleanse ourselves. And I was reading about, David Gusek said this in his commentary, God will take a bitter situation to purge you out of an unhealthy condition. God will take you out a bitter situation to purge you of an unhealthy condition. You know, maybe you've gone through a really bad time in your life, a really bad time. I don't know how bad it is. You know, people may be here this morning that have had, you know, I've had times in my life where I've hit a wall and it's been really, really difficult and it's been a bitter time. Situations in our life can be bitter, but we need to look Ahead, we look, need to look beyond the bitterness and see the purpose of God for this bitterness. So when we come to verse 24, it says, And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? Fifteen times between leaving Egypt and the promised land, we have recorded that the Israelites complained. They complained about the Red Sea, They complained about the water being bitter, about being hungry. They complained about their leaders. You know, how many times have we seen all these things in our lives that we complain about? You know, God had just done these miracles, but they still complained. And again, we're very fortunate in the church here. We don't have many complainers, and that's really, really great. You know, as a leadership team, to have people that don't complain, you know, it's it's really good. So praise the Lord uh, for that. Verse 25 says, So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them. This is the crux of the story. It says, take, he says, take the wood and throw it into the water, and the water become sweet what a picture this is of the cross what a picture when we apply the cross to a bitter situation God makes it sweet 
What a joy, brothers and sisters, that we can take everything to the Lord. We can come to the cross for everything in our lives. Whatever we do, when the, when the wood hits the water, it becomes sweet. In our lives, if we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. We're going to heaven, and that's guaranteed. This morning, it may be your first time here, maybe it's your hundredth time here, but if you haven't come to the cross this morning, then today is the day that you need to come and trust. The word says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Don't wait, for, uh, brothers, uh, friends, this morning to come to the cross. When we come to the cross, God makes our situations sweet. So whatever that is for you this morning, you know, whether you're a Christian here, whether you're not a Christian, you know, maybe we have, we've got to repent as... As Burnt already mentioned this morning, we need to repent at the foot of the cross. The cross is the answer to all our needs, past and present. John 3 and 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Friends, do you know Jesus as your saviour this morning? If not, I encourage you to think about it to be challenged by what we've just heard. The cross is the way. The cross is the answer, brothers and sisters, this morning to our problems in life. When the, water, when the wood hits the water, it becomes sweet. And this was the case for the Israelites. He threw it into the water and the waters become sweet. You know, what a, another amazing miracle, isn't it? You know, they've walked through the Red Sea They've now had the water turned sweet. But we'll see in a few weeks' time that they then start complaining they've got no food. So it's just a continual thing, isn't it, in their lives where they're going up and down. And that can be our lives, can't it? You know, we can go going through tough times and maybe we even hit a wall. But as I said at the beginning, it's all part of our training to reach the next height for us that God has for us. We have to fight the good fight and climb over the wall. And the reason why we need to do that is because when we climb over the wall, we can tell people what happened at the wall. You know, so something that's really difficult happens in our lives. For example, I lose my job. The Lord provided for me and is providing for me daily. You know, I can tell people, I can witness. And it's the same with our lives, isn't it? If you've had something really difficult in your life, Maybe, I know there's some people here that have been through tragic circumstances, losing relatives, losing children. You know, very, very difficult things that happen to us. But things happen for a reason, and God uses those so that when we get to the next wall, we can climb over the next wall and we can carry on and look beyond what the issues and what the problems are. Coming to verse 26, it says... If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. And what God is saying is to the children of Israel, you know, you need to listen to me. You need to learn how to live in my presence. God's first concern for the Jewish people is that they trust him. And that's, again, a message for each one of us this morning. Are you trusting in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? He's gone to the cross of Calvary for each one of us. He's died, but now, praise the Lord, he's in heaven and he's seated at his Father's right hand. But brothers and sisters, we believe that he may come back today. We believe he's coming back at some point, And today might be the day. So if you haven't trusted him today, I urge you to come to Jesus at the foot of the cross and repent of your sin. The application for us here, am I listening to God's voice speaking to me today? You know, it's so often, isn't it, we come to church and we've got a nice sermon, go home and, you know, we don't really take much notice of it a lot of the time. And it's, it can be like little things that really, really speak to us. Am I trusting him for everything in my life? Am I being faithful to him in the way that I am living? Have I cleansed myself of all the parasites of the world? 
as they needed to do for the parasites of Israel, of, of Egypt. At the end of the verse, it says, I am the Lord who heals you, Jehovah. Jehovah Rapha, this is one of the, wor- one of the names of the Lord. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. And again, you may be going through really difficult times in your lives, but what a joy to know, isn't it? You know, today, that the Lord is our healer. We've been praying for people that have got operations and things this week and, uh, and other health issues. But the Lord is our healer and we can trust in him as we walk closely with him. God wants to purge ourselves and clean us of the bitter waters of Mora so that we can walk for him in 2024. You know, is something stopping you walking with the Lord this year? He wants us to stop being bitter, having those bitter waters and those angry feelings towards God. But we need to come to him. You know, maybe you're in a wilderness this morning, a wilderness season of your life, a difficult season. I just want to encourage you this morning that God is fully sufficient and will supply all our needs. And he wants us to know that as well. It's not just a a written down thing in the Bible. It's true. God is fully sufficient. You know, can I have an amen? Amen. Amen. The Lord is fully sufficient. It doesn't matter what it is in our lives, you know, whether it's something really, really difficult, you know, it can be, you know, I keep saying it about my job, but the the Lord's provided, you know, I I left work in December last year in December and the severance package that I've got paid, that I got paid in December, I've still not spent any of it yet because the Lord has provided. You know, it's absolutely amazing, brothers and sisters, to know that God is fully sufficient And he will supply all our needs. But that's a challenge to us as well though, isn't it? You know, because he does challenge, he does give us so many things in our lives. But you know, how 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 close am I walking in my life to the Lord? You know, some days, you know, you know, we we were talking at the men's breakfast, you know, a few months ago with some of the guys around the table and they were saying about what they struggle with. You know, and it's and it's, it doesn't matter whether it's a youngster or whether it's like one of the old guys that's at the men's breakfast. We all, we're all struggling with the same things and different things as well. And, um, but we, we need to be encouraged that God is fully sufficient. And then we come to the final verse, the glory. Verse 27. And it says this, Then they came to Elim, where, they, where there were 12 wells of water and 70 palm trees. So there they camped by the waters so they've had the time of testing you imagine they've they've had this water that's turned into from bitter to sweet they're walking through the wilderness and then they see palm trees ahead they see palm trees I don't about you I love I love going on holiday to the Caribbean I love the the palm trees nothing better than, than seeing a palm tree and they saw 70 palm trees imagine the wells of water there as well you know what a joy that must have been to be walking through the wilderness and they see palm trees. And again, the, 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 message, the, the, the lesson for this is, after a time of testing, God has a time of refreshing for the people of Israel. He knew exactly what they needed. He knew when to test them and when to rest them. I thought that was a good quote that I found last week. He knew when to test them and when to rest them. Sometimes we come to a really difficult times in our lives. Sometimes we almost get to the point where we think we can't take it anymore. And then God gives us rest and he gives us peace. Refreshment in the desert. Plenty of water, an oasis where they can find rest. And this is a foretaste of the promised land of Canaan. And for us, for us when we're refreshed, it's a foretaste of heaven, isn't it? It's a foretaste of going to be with the Lord. And what a time and what a day that will be. There's 12 wells and 70 palm trees. And this was really, really interesting. Um, I was looking in the book of Luke. And when, God, when the Lord sends out the disciples, he sends out 12 disciples to start with. Then, in the next chapter, he sends out 70. And that's the same number as we've got here, 12 and 70. So the number of blessings here is the same number that's in, in, this, uh, in Luke chapter 9, verses 1 and 2, and Luke chapter 10. 
And I was looking at these numbers and I thought, you know, they, these people were sent out, a 12 and a 70, to bless those people that, that were around them. And today, the Lord still uses brothers and sisters today to give us spiritual refreshment. And that's why fellowship is so important. You know, we need, we need to be in fellowship one with another. I'm a very, I, I like having, spending time with people, as, as you know. And when I go out and, and meet Christians, we are blessed and we are refreshed. And the Lord sends out 10, 12 disciples, sorry, and then he sends out 70 disciples and he sends them out to bless the world. And that's what we need to do ourselves, not just in our witness to non-believers, but also to the Christians in the church. We need to refresh each other. They were there to introduce blessings that the Lord had provided for them. So to finish, Elim speaks of the deep inward satisfaction that God gives us to those who live, live in obedience to him and to his word. Psalm 92 and verse 13 says this, those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. The springs of water speak of refreshment. The palm trees speak of protection. So the Lord wants to refresh us if we've been through a difficult time. If we're going through a difficult time, just be aware that time of refreshment is coming. And the palm trees speak of protection. Protection from the heat. And the Lord will protect each one of us. So as we close, just, just to conclude, if we hit the wall, if we are at the wall in our lives, let's just climb over it and look what's beyond. The promised land is beyond. You know, heaven is beyond the wall. And yes, the devil may put different sized walls in front of us. But each time we climb over those walls, we're growing. We're getting further and further on in our Christian lives. And if you're not a Christian here this morning, can I just encourage you, when the, when the wood hits the water, the water becomes sweet. When the cross, if you come to the cross, the Lord will take all your issues and your sins and put them as far away as you can imagine and you can be on the way to heaven today. So be encouraged, you know. The waters were bitter, but the Lord made them sweet. In our lives, our lives can be really, really difficult at times, but God is fully sufficient and will meet all our needs. Amen.